It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Throtz here. Mary Jo Foley's here. The clock is ticking for TikTok, but Mary Jo Foley has a theory. We'll find out. Also coming up, a milestone for Windows 10 2004 and Microsoft Project Mocha. It's finally here. All coming up next on Windows Weekly. Windows Weekly comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Securing every access point in your company doesn't have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure, even when they're working remotely. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 688, recorded Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020. Dead Cat Walking. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Wasabi Hot Cloud Storage. Thinking about moving your data storage to the cloud? Wasabi is enterprise class cloud storage at one fifth the price of Amazon S3 and faster than the competition with no fees for egress or API requests and no complex storage tiers. Start a free trial at wasabi.com and enter the code WINDOWS. And by Barracuda. Did you know that 91% of all cyber attacks start with an email? To uncover the threats hiding in your Office 365 account, get a secure and free email threat scan at barracuda.com slash windows. And by Adobe Sign. Business needs to keep moving whether people are working together or apart. With Adobe Sign working remote, it actually works. Learn more about what Adobe Sign can do for your business at adobe.com slash business moves. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft. And any minute now, we're watching The Wire. Any minute now, news could come in that TikTok is <laughs> is finally sold to Microsoft. They said it was going to be yesterday. TikTok, TikTok, yeah. what you going to do? Sources said. Will you keep watching The Wire just so we don't have to? Mary Jo Foley, all about TikTok.com is the new domain. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Paul Thorat, yeah. Thorat.com. Tickrot.com. <laughs> so funny. Um, you know, we have a 17 year old, a senior in high school, and there was a girl he had a crush on in grade school who is now a TikTok star. Oh, well, really? Wow. Yeah. Well, it, I don't you know. She's got so 80,000 followers, two and a half million likes. Yeah, and which means she's a Chinese operative. Yep. And uh, it's yeah. really, she's great. Uh, it's really cute. And I think. You're just helping President Xi. Yeah. I, I don't think that. I don't know what to think. <laughs> so we will we'll watch. We'll watch and we'll see um we'll see what happens. Um that could It that just could keeps break. getting weirder though, right? Like every week it's like something's weirder and weirder. And I weirder. love the I love the president. This is this is like and we expect literally, you might as well say it with a yeah. we expect a large cut of this. Like, I think what he wants is for Asaj Nadella to shake his hand and slip him a couple of hundreds. <laughs> a couple of hundreds. You know I mean? We had at least two Benjamins out of this. Benjamins. It's like, what do you yeah. mean you want a large cut of this? I don't... Yeah, cut anyway. kiss no, the ring. Things. What are we looking for here? There was an Intel announcement this morning. It's a busy time. Yeah. yeah. IFA is going on. Mm -hmm. Things yep. are happening. There's even is. some people there. Yep. So the latest on the TikTok <laughs> is now it's not Microsoft, Oracle, and then <laughs> Walmart had done a deal with SoftBank, but then was they said no, you don't have any technical skills. So now okay. the coalition. What is the coalition of the willing <laughs> currently? Microsoft, Walmart. No Oracle in that. Um, no, I guess he wouldn't team up with. No, Oracle is separate. From that. That's a separate bill. Yeah. Now, why would Walmart want to be part of this? What, what's the okay? So the, the theory there, there? there are a few parts to this that I've read and heard. So first off, Walmart is a big Microsoft customer. You know, they they yeah. went to Microsoft for Azure because they wanted to go to anybody but AWS, given that Walmart competes with AWS, right? So uh, five years ago, they signed a strategic agreement with Microsoft that that they were going to bring a bunch of their servers over to Azure. 
and work with Microsoft on different AI projects involving Azure and other technologies and also do some Internet of Things stuff with Microsoft. Um, Did, so it's so not that weird. Microsoft 365? I'm sorry. Sorry. I think uh, I think this year they also adopted Microsoft 365. Yeah, I think so. Walmart. I think so. Yeah. Yep. So, but Walmart that doesn't explain their customers at Microsoft doesn't explain why they would want TikTok or so to get Walmart, in bed. Walmart's right. building um, an alternative to Amazon Prime called Walmart Plus. They just launched. They announced that yesterday. It's launched. Right. It'll come out. Uh, and so people think that they want some of the e-commerce capabilities that TikTok uh, has to integrate into that service. So, you know, like they don't have movies and TV shows. So what if you said, hey, if you want to create content on TikTok or see content on TikTok, you need Walmart Plus. They wouldn't do that. Oh, that wouldn't work. No, I, no. I don't think any of this will work, but like... They, no, they must TikTok is right now is absolutely free. And that's the <laughs> premise it's, I know. It's the but what premise. if you say, okay, TikTok stays free, but if you want the premium version of it, no ads or no. you get extra capabilities? I don't think I'm just saying, this is what people think <laughs> people is are the wrong. reason. Okay. Here's the, here's Why do you the, think Walmart's The e-commerce <laughs> part could see, you know, th think about Line, right? The other, or yeah. WeChat, the, the Chinese yeah. uh, company that is also banned. Um, mm -hmm. Those become massive e-commerce platforms. So right. I think Walmart's saying, well... It, we could, as we add features to this, it, make it more of a social network. A, Walmart ads, okay, period, right? right? B, right. why not have Walmart commerce uh, as part of those ads or as part of the TikTok thing? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that's yeah. completely doable. Walmart, uh, uh, Walmart commerce with Azure on the back end. Yeah. Right. What, what I think both, both companies, companies fail to recognize is... This the hold that TikTok has on the young, the youth of America and Australia, yeah. New Zealand, and Canada is tenuous <laughs> at best. I right? know it is. Tomorrow, yeah. these kids. Of course, this is the thing. These people don't have any brand loyalty. No, you know the yeah. thing that was cool when you were young is lame today. Right. Right. You know, I, 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 I this is what I've always said from the very beginning of this TikTok thing. I my initial impression was, isn't it hugely probable that this thing will just be a flash in the pan. Yes. That they have 100 million users today and they have 1 million tomorrow and it doesn't matter. It's anymore. like buying Zynga. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's right. dumb. Is Google clout. still a thing? Remember Clout? Clout. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Clout. <laughs> it's dumb. Well, it's, Vine. I mean, you know, it's an yeah, Vine. Yeah. Yeah. Famously, Twitter bought Vine and made, just made a few stumbles and uh, sure. everybody left the platform. Yep. It's weird because right. Twitter nails it everywhere else. Uh -huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I know. It's a huge gamble. It is. And I I gotta say, if I'm Amy Hood and Satya Nadella and I'm sitting here looking at this, there's gonna be more things in the con category than the pro at this point. Well, especially now because uh, China has kind of stepped in over the weekend, right? And they uh, right. imposed a bunch of export restrictions, one at least one of which applies to TikTok. And the, this is kind of a rumor slash you know, third person report. But yeah. uh, one of the contingencies of this deal on the Chinese part might be that they don't get the algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about some of the stuff, you know, Microsoft might want the data, you know, to, to feed into its AI and its graph and so forth. And okay, fine. And they might want the Azure business. But the one thing I, I you know, again, I've read, I just, I really don't know a lot about TikTok yeah. myself. Same. But I mean, you know, from the beginning was that their secret sauce, it was this algorithm. And this was... Mm -hmm kind of what people were really or whatever companies were going to buy and mm -hmm. if that's not part of the deal i mean that could be enough to scare off microsoft and yep. oracle or whatever mm -hmm. it, is it conceivable that this is just to get curry favor with the white house no <laughs> especially with an election just through two months i gotta off. tell you if god if microsoft if that's what this was i would <sighs> have to rethink everything about my relationship with this company that is the most sickening possibility Especially given that this, it's not just like, look, I cover Microsoft professionally, whatever. But this company has positioned itself as being ethically superior to its competitors. And yeah. I, that is just the lowest, grossest thing they could possibly do. I know. But to I some degree, they're already doing it because, I mean, this is what the president wanted. And so they, they, they stepped yeah. up and said, OK, we'll do that. So to some no. degree, that's already what's going on. 
Though the timeline of this is very confusing because we don't know all the parts, right? But everything I'm reading now says Microsoft was negotiating to do this before Trump and the White House stepped in. Yep, yep. Like they and were not, already not talking to buy them about them originally, right? right. The, the, no, I think it was the New York Times. Plus, it was. It was the New York Times who uh, said just to host it on Azure and make them a giant customer, right? So they were talking to them before it yeah, got all possible that. Right. The the White House got involved and then it was like an acquisition and they kind of looked into it and they yep. were like, well, this is better than losing it. Maybe I again, I you think it's related to Jedi. Do you think no, there's a tit for tat? No, well, wait, don't. I don't. That's no. that's no, the kind well, of thing the White directly. House does. I know, but I, mean, I feel like Jedi the government. right? Yeah, <laughs> because of Je Jedi? they I mean, basically already won Jedi. I mean, it's just a formality for the announcement at this point. Well, I the feel DOD like. has they, to approve it. Do you That's know, right. but I think it's completely up. possible that the president called him, called up Sachi and said, if you would like your Jedi contact with the Pentagon, it would really oh, be good if you did a um, favor. It could be. I don't think <laughs> that's oh, out so, of the no, question. No, no, hold on a second. You've got to remember, there were only two viable options for Jedi, uh, Amazon and Microsoft. Right. White House can't stand Amazon because the Amazon right. CEO and founder owns the Washington Post, which is critical of him. So he wants Microsoft to win this. I think it's a lot more likely that he, knowing Microsoft as a company that for some reason he trusts or whatever likes, having TikTok end up in Microsoft's hands was good for him, uh, yeah. good for the White House, whatever. And Oracle too, apparently or he's they publicly stated Oracle would be good too. So these are just like another, is if Amazon kind of came in and wanted part of this. That's what you don't yeah, want. I could picture yeah. them yeah. trying to stop that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know, how, you know what that's like on note, Microsoft's side. Note that Amazon did, didn't even attempt <laughs> they didn't. Yeah, to get yeah, involved yeah. here. I know. And right. neither did Facebook, right? I mean, well, like they the couldn't companies who are, antitrust, that would have And really same with been. Amazon, right? Well, I mean, they're kind of in the crosshairs too, aren't they? <laughs> no, but they're not in social media. Facebook no, is. No, they're in no, different but, antitrust But issues. you could make the argument we don't want you in, in you know, getting into another market. Yeah. It would just take okay. it. You'd be able to take advantage of your monopoly yeah. in this other market, you know. Yeah. There's too much like scrutiny Google for those too, companies. I think right? Facebook Google looked supposedly into it, but looked, but didn't. Oh yeah. But decided Maybe it was no. Google, right? I think, Google. And didn't, I think because of antitrust. And me too. Its engineers would have walked out the door. <laughs> Honestly, I'm but sure, by the way, uh, I, that's a fairly credible happy. response to this. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people at Microsoft aren't aren't keen on the government negotiation love, part of this. I'd, I'd love to hear them speak yeah. up then. You know, because this is I, this seems like Fuck a huge up. mistake. Yeah. Huge mistake. Yeah. I'm really confused how this happens. How many, um, yeah. Mary Jo might know this, how many users did they get with LinkedIn? What was the, do you remember? Uh, I forget how many. Um, it wasn't like significant. I mean, it's probably, it's one of the smaller ones, right? But obviously they're kind of more well, valuable per user. I think it's hundreds kind of, of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Yes, yeah, so it's not no, even it's gonna, millions. That's right. It's got to be millions of people. How many LinkedIn Okay, some low there? number. I, I don't remember. I'm sorry. I, yeah. But, you know, obviously TikTok is right now 100 million. That's yeah. a pretty good number. Two hundred. Wait, uh, LinkedIn has over five hundred seventy-five million users. Two hundred sixty million active users. So two hundred sixty million. It's a lot. Oh, that's way more than I would have thought. Yeah. You're not okay. on LinkedIn, though, are you? Not really. Um. <laughs> I, I, I signed up one day, and I I never signed I'm up. On it, but I, I don't know, need I a job, so I don't pay much attention no, to but you that. guys just, I'm telling you you know why you need to be on linkedin even if you're not looking yeah. for a job because it's very interesting what you can learn as a reporter just by watching your news oh, yeah. feed and watching people's titles change and things oh, yeah. come and go i'm just saying well no, you're right you're, linkedin there, is there the last nice up. social network it's <laughs> nicer well <laughs> it's pretty nice nothing bad happens on linkedin right eh. Well, really, there's been people who've spoofed accounts and there's wow. been complaints. I mean, LinkedIn does a lot of posts about here's how we're trying to keep you safe on LinkedIn. Right. So there's, there's <laughs> is there like, trolling on LinkedIn? John Campbell going on that. Everything's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. No, people post pay, fake things on LinkedIn, really? you know, and then it's, wow. like, yeah, yeah. For yeah. the most part, I see a lot of, you know, it's business focused. I see a lot of articles. Should, I see actually yeah. a lot of surprisingly large number of really good articles about business on there. Yeah. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. so no, it, it's mostly good. Understand. Mostly good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know. Right. I, well, that will be my epic of the week next week. Thanks. What would LinkedIn <laughs> trolling look like? 
Yeah. There's <laughs> someone offering you a job and then being like, psych. No. So, you know, some people as jokes, oh. re- re- like say that you're good at something like Mary Jo Foley is oh. really good at names. Right. Yeah, like or something be, like it's Yeah. That'd that be bad kind of trolling. Yeah. It's supposed to be yeah, funny. I, look, but I apologize about funny. that, Mary Jo. I don't know why you keep bringing it up. I knew it was uh-huh. you. I knew it. I knew you, even though you didn't have a profile of you. <laughs> Yeah, your avatar is like a no, little so ninja it, cat. I now it's good you guys are bringing up LinkedIn because I wanted to bring something up in this discussion about LinkedIn that's connected with TikTok. So, a lot of articles that are coming out lately talking about Microsoft and TikTok are, keep saying, you know, the way this really makes sense for Microsoft is they'll just let it run itself, like GitHub and LinkedIn. So, right, I don't think that's something that people who understand what Microsoft's done with LinkedIn would really get behind because yes, Microsoft has let LinkedIn run itself and LinkedIn right now is making money. No, I shouldn't say that. LinkedIn has revenues. We don't know if it's profitable. They laid off a thousand people earlier this year from LinkedIn. And I just, I don't feel like LinkedIn has really panned out (laughs) for Microsoft. Yeah, because I I mean, I think the big argument there was we're going to integrate LinkedIn into everything. It's going to be amazing. And they did it. (laughs) <laughs> and they they didn't right and and it just sort of feels yeah it's like yeah they absolutely have run it as its own company why did you buy it you know like what was the what if you're gonna I do know. that what's the point so yeah. I went back and looked in 2016 when Microsoft bought LinkedIn at, about mm-hmm. articles I wrote at the time and I was I made the case as Microsoft did too like it's all about integrating the data and they're gonna take yeah. the LinkedIn graph and yeah. the Microsoft graph and gonna put them together and this is gonna be amazing well they never did that they never right. did. And it sounds like that's the plan for TikTok. They'll have a similar story. I mean, obviously, TikTok is a consumer service, but there's a lot of data there, and that's what they don't get from Bing or whatever. And it gives them some uh, data to power their, you know, like I said, the AI stuff and the Microsoft graph and all that. And uh, they need that. There's no doubt about it. Google's got a huge advantage there. Yeah. But... If Microsoft starts integrating parts of TikTok into its services, like maybe with Xbox, right? Like one of the Xbox um, Game Pass right. or Cloud, Cloud or something. That's the only place yep. I can see it making a lot of sense. I mean, people have joked about them integrating it into Microsoft 365. I'm like, eh, I don't think so. But you, you know, Call of Duty in some downtime <laughs> between the matches, and you can watch a couple of TikTok videos while the time passes. Or make a TikTok of yourself playing Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be good watching. <laughs> Old man sits in chair. No, but do it because then people will link, will uh, lip sync. Old man sitting yes. in chair. Yeah. Right. And when attractive young people lip sync Paul Thorat, it'll mm-hmm. be gold. Exactly. Actually, See, I don't understand how this economy you works. You should team up with Justin Salvato. Have you seen his yeah. latest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should I play it? Yeah, yes. why not? I mean, this is just so everyone knows. This, this would make way more sense if you're watching the video. Yeah, it's because because uh, the sound is exactly what you normally hear, right? Um, when you're listening but, to the show, but he takes, but it's done to he a, takes Family like a, Guy, right, and um, integrates our words. So right, me, so me, it's a mash. Back it up. You gotta watch it. You gotta watch it if you're gonna, gonna get it. Microsoft is repositioned, right? So in the same way that the Surface <laughs> so now you're Pro mayor, is the, the laptop or was the laptop that could replace your laptop. The, mayor, the, I'm sorry, the tablet un- that could replace your laptop. Um, this is a device <laughs> yeah. that fits in your pocket. It's a Very, phone. Oh, no. oh, yeah. A phone has kid. one screen. This has two. They do <laughs> both you fit your pocket. They do like both make phone calls. <laughs> and the, all the tips kept coming in saying it's, it's a device. It's a pocket-sized device that does telephony. And I'm like, why are they not calling it a phone? Why? So why? Right. What's the? Is <laughs> it, I have, know, the real reason history? is the. It's and by the way, he. I, I was kind of amazed that Panos really spelled this out. This is so funny. It, it is like I said. It's like the iPad. You you kind of present it and you say, look, this is a thing that if it works, it, it could take the place of two devices, and those two devices mm-hmm. in this case are a phone and a, a tablet, right? If it works, you could just have this one thing instead of those two things. I'm an idiot. I you know I don't have any memory of burning being burned. What is this burned you've talked about? <laughs> Why do I have to eat the berries? Oh man. I like this one though. I'm I'm like the, the boxer. A boxer. One, two, three. You just we just don't really have those devices. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like the idea of the hinge about. and the two screens. Oh, you just uh, I like think a you do. Fast, huh? just like nail got nailed right there, and you're just reeling you in. Eight, 
Nine, <laughs> ten, we have a winner! I look at the various prototype uses that they have on the screen. <laughs> right, and it does. They, they said everything in the Play Store will run. Even if the developer doesn't do anything to it, uh, it'll run. Th <laughs> <laughs> Says the king. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Uh, you always make sorry. us laugh. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, that's uh, Peter Griffin and uh, his wife. I can't remember her first name. There's Lois. Lois, that's right. And uh, and his Quagmire friends. Quagmire. And, uh, who is the guy in the wheelchair? Um, he sounds Joe. just like you. Joe sounds just like you, which is, I think, how yeah, this that's all that, started. That's that excellent actor, that character. Yeah, guy, um, Putty. Yeah. What's the guy's yeah. name? Uh, is it something you like Duck? He was... He was Putty. Uh, he was Putty. That's what yeah. I, was, I was. I was <laughs> in, uh, yeah, on, in Seinfeld. on uh, Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah. And then he's great. I love him. And you do sound yeah, like awesome. him. Patrick Warburton. He was like the tick. Yeah. Patrick Warburton. You could do a Patrick Warburton. You could fool everybody. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> he's great. He's just great. Oh, thank you uh, for our lighthearted romp through uh, the duo. <laughs> Hey, it's my last chance, Mary Jo, to cancel the duo. Oh, there's oh. Sriracha. There he is. Got in. Thanks to foreshortening, it looks like a giant tiger has just walked into Mary Jo's office. <laughs> Jeez. It's my last chance to cancel the duo because it's going to come a week from tomorrow. Yeah. And so buy the fold, the two. fold two. What do you think? I would get a fold two. Really? Yeah, totally. But you don't have a duo. You don't have a duo. No, I don't have to have a duo. The thing you need to understand about the Samsung versus the Microsoft device is the Samsung has all the same productivity stuff as the Microsoft device, but it's actually an awesome phone. Mm -hmm. It's, you know what I mean? Like it's a phone. Like you could actually use it as a phone. You fold the thing up, it fits in your pocket, it's a phone. It has wow. an outside screen, it's a phone. Now the only you one of the up. three of us who has a Duo mm -hmm. is not saying anything, I note. <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't have a she doesn't have a fold. <laughs> she can't really. I don't have a fold. Well, you don't have a um, fold either. I can tell you, the duo will fit in your pocket. I know, but I watched the video. Like you it can just watch the video. Pocket. It's pretty obvious. I mean, yeah. No, the duo fits in your pocket. I've I've put it in my pocket, my front pocket, and my back pocket, and it fits. That's all yeah, I can say, like really. A, you can't turn it like on. A, it's like a barn door. <laughs> like <laughs> you sat it's wider. I mean, it is wider. It's wider. Yeah. I mean, it's only five hundred dollars more to get the fold. That's a well, lot. <laughs> I th the the big question with the fold, obviously, is the screen, the reliability of that. Yeah. Right, that's the thing, yeah. and yeah. that right. that's definitely a question. Um, yeah. But I think the the duo gives up too much as a phone, and that's the stuff that most people spend their most time on. The right. stuff that really matters for a phone is the very stuff that that thing doesn't do well, and the fold will do that stuff very well. Awesome okay. camera, mm -hmm. NFC, excellent. It's a camera, I mean, a phone form factor, not like a wide thing, like a mini tablet. I don't know. The thing, it's it depends what you want to use it for. Yeah. Do you want to use it as a mini tablet or do you care more about it? I mean, being I a have phone? a phone, so right. most people who buy them, this would be their No, But the point of this device. would be that it replaces two right. devices and the Samsung can, and I don't think that the Duo can. Yeah. Decisions, decisions. Let's Dig your own grave, buddy. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> You've only got one week, one week left. Yeah. Next, probably on the not even that week. long. At some like point, they're going to ship it. So I probably should, if I'm going to cancel yeah. the duo, now's the time. It is. Yeah. You really were excited Look, about I it. I still think am. I still order. am. I think I, you should keep your order. I, I do. I don't like the creasing uh, screen. Maybe pass we'll it down to Burke. If you if you don't like it, Burke's got my I surface like that you're go. You're planning already to get rid of it. Yeah, Burke's got my surface go. <laughs> it just yeah. says a lot. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I obviously either one of those things is very interesting. I mean, no doubt about it. But right, you know what? If, if you haven't watched the uh, that un, what do they call it? Um, this, whatever the Samsung event is. Um, un un the one that they had yeah. for the Z Fold Two. Uh, yeah. It's I, I really thought very little of folding devices. Like I thought, you know. Maybe in the future, you know, we'll see. And I mean, for me personally, I'm not going to spend two grand on this thing. That's ridiculous. Plus, like I said, the screen is completely unproven. We need to, we need some proof point on whether that's going to be reliable or not. But assuming they get this right, I mean, the 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 improvements they made in this version are substantial. Like, are they it really really look? Yeah. Oh, now you really you've thrown a monkey wrench in my 
I didn't intend to. <laughs> plans. What if you get both? Get no, both. I can't justify that. I really can't. <laughs> I just two can't. mortgage payments. Come on. Exactly. No big deal. Come on. Probably I am just, getting both. I imagine Jason Howell. I bet you're Albert going to. Get one. Going so to. that means I'm buying Somebody it. at Twit will get it, right? Yeah. And, somebody well, will. and if somebody gets it, I buy it. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It all comes out yeah. of my pocket. So. There you go. Yeah. Well, on that note, I would like to get a... Um... Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> Santa. <laughs> uh, decisions, decisions. Our show today brought to you by Wasabi Hot Cloud Storage. Not sushi wasabi. The wasabi that you put your stuff on, the cloud. Wasabi is an amazing solution that nobody's heard of. Well, maybe you have by now, I hope, because we've been talking about it a lot. It's a, it's a kind of com plug-compatible replacement for Amazon's S3 or any cloud solution, really. 80% cheaper. I don't hate to even use it. Less expensive than Amazon S3. Significantly cheaper even than buying hard drives. And I would argue more secure, more reliable than buying hard drives. In fact, Wasabi is so affordable, you could... Store data in Wasabi's cloud for less than the annual cost of the maintenance fee on the same amount of on-prem storage. Just the maintenance fee alone. That's, that's the deal. Wasabi is affordable. It's reliable. It's fast. It's a disruptive price performance model that makes buying cloud storage just the natural addition. So many people know they're going to be generating a certain amount of data every day, every week, every month. And so they just buy more hard drives all the time, buy bigger storage solutions all the time. It's so much easier to store it in the cloud. Wait, you say it's not as secure. Yeah, I would say it's more secure than on-prem. 11 nines of durability, 11 nines of durability. And honestly, it really, they should say perfect durability because all of your data is hosted in premier tier four data centers that are not only highly secure, but fully redundant. Wasabi does active integrity checking. All objects that they store are checked for integrity every 90 days. And since you're redundant, if one bit's off, you replace it, you're, you're golden. Wasabi is secure by default. All the data stored in Wasabi's cloud is always encrypted at rest, even if you don't specify it. Of course, it's always encrypted in transit as well. Wasabi follows all the industry's um, best security models and design practices, things like access control mechanisms, you know, bucket policies, ACLs. Uh, there's a feature I really like, and I know, you know, probably everybody will copy it, but man, these guys, they were really thinking when they said, you, your data can be made immutable. It can't be erased. It can't be altered, obviously, without jumping through a bunch of hoops, right? I mean, you can obviously turn it off, but that's awesome. That means ransomware is stymied. You've got a you've got a good clean backup. Ransomware cannot touch. You're protected from hackers and, by the way, from yourself. HIPAA compliant, FINRA compliant, CJIS compliant. It uses the Amazon S3 uh, API, so you already have plenty of tools that work perfectly well with it. It's faster. It's less expensive. Oh, and they don't charge for egress. By the way, that's a big deal. Because a lot of times you look at the pricing for cloud storage and go, oh, that's, I, that's not bad. That's a pretty good deal, right? Better than on-prem. But what if you want that data back? Oh, they're going to charge you for that too? Oh. No fees for egress. No fees for API requests. No, none of those complicated S3 storage tiers. It's just simple. And you can either do a flat rate, very affordable flat rate, or you can pay one time with, for reserved capacity storage. If you know exactly how much data you use every month, or pretty close, every month we're going to use this much, every year we're going to use this much, buy that much ahead of time and save even more. You could purchase in increments of one, three, or five years. And so the longer the term, the more the storage, the greater the discount. In most cases, people know how much they're going to need pretty close. This will save you even more. You just buy it ahead of time. I think Wasabi is amazing. And if you're an MSP that sells cloud services, you learn more and charge less. Everybody, it's a win all around. Calculate the savings for yourself. Start a free trial of storage for a month. Make sure it's exactly what you want. Go to wasabi.com, click the free trial link, and use the offer code Windows. Everybody's moving to the cloud. That's not even a question anymore. It's just a better way of storing data. But I got a better, better way. Wasabi. Join the movement. Migrate your data to the cloud and do it with confidence. Go to wasabi.com and use the offer code 
windows. Thank you, Wasabi. We appreciate your support. And we appreciate your support, dear listener, when you use that offer code because that tells them you heard it here. Wasabi.com, offer code windows. I do feel that the Soylent that I drank earlier is starting to yeah. go to my mm -hmm, head. Mm -hmm. My stomach is... Uh, <laughs> Better than it, like... Carbonating in your stomach it's and moving doing up your too. esophagus. Yeah. There's a little bubbly, <laughs> and I only had a couple of sips, so I'll probably only be a little bit upset. Yeah, Affected. that's like when a kitty eats paste at school. It's okay. It's just a little. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a little bit. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, so again, we'll just keep watching uh, the wire. I got the ticker right over here for uh, any TikTok so, news. I don't, you know what? Mary Jo had a theory uh, when we were talking privately about this, that if they do announce it this week, it would come very late on Friday Yeah. to kind of get it in After under the, the wire closes. and avoid yeah. some of the negative right. news stuff, not to mention right. the stock market impact. Right. Um, yeah. And I think that makes sense, right? I mean, yeah, I think because it's a long holiday weekend. Yeah. No, it's oh, a it's holiday perfect. weekend. So you got to put your Microsoft oh. PR hat on and think about this, right? Oh like, okay, God. when's yeah. the best time to announce this if we have a choice Labor of Day, when? That most American of holidays. Oh. So late Friday, it's not just going to be yeah. Microsoft. Right. Everything's going to hit the fan late Friday. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. It's news dump Friday, right? Right okay. before a holiday weekend. Get the popcorn, weekend. kids, yeah. right about 4 p.m. <laughs> Eastern Bob, time. do we have any bad financial news we need to report? <laughs> yeah, let's do it Friday. Friday. <laughs> it's Labor Day weekend. And also... You know, it limits how many questions they can take. It it maximizes how much exposure mm -hmm. it'll get because everybody will write it Friday night. So it'll right. play as the top story over the whole weekend, right? Nobody because will read it. Monday we're closed, right? Nobody and will read like, it. Yeah. yeah. By Tuesday, we'll That's have forgotten. Of, oh, no. By, by Tuesday, Tuesday like, wait, TikTok what happened will be Friday? an item on the Microsoft.com <laughs> website. <Yeah. laughs> you know? That would be my guess. If, if I'm wearing my Frank Shaw hat right now, I would say Friday afternoon. Oh, you're so smart. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. I think so. I think that makes sense. If they have a choice of when to announce it, yeah. maybe yeah, yeah. The, you know, the maybe thing. the U.S. Uh, Treasury right. will tell us when they have to announce it. Well, by the way, maybe <laughs> China will tell us when they have to announce. Yeah, so exactly. you know, who knows? But. Oh, you and you mentioned that, that it looks like the Chinese government saying there's no. This is going to be on the export restricted list, so no transfer of IP yeah. of intellectual property, particularly the AI used. For algorithm right. for, uh, right. for for moving. So the issue there, by the way, is the, the phrase is dual use, meaning consumer and military. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. kind of like Microsoft mm -hmm. splits up their business between commercial and consumer, but in China, it's like a military and consumer. It's all military. And, <laughs> Don't be fooled. and in fact, I didn't know this, but Amy Webb told me ByteDance, the the parent company, actually yeah. does AI for the Chinese government, including the social credit score stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're going to hold on to all of that. Yeah. So okay. that might have put a monkey. I wonder if that threw a monkey I know. in the deal. That well, may that be the reason it doesn't happen, right? Right. At all. And if, <laughs> if that's the case, I'm going to say something I'll never say again. God bless the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> seriously, this is the last thing Microsoft needs. Interesting. That's very, it's interesting. It's, Not that they believe in God and shit. No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> they're <laughs> communist no, if you, atheists. If, you, by the way, yeah, if, you, if anybody wants to see crazy conspiracy theories about this whole TikTok deal, just oh, enter into your search engine on Twitter, Microsoft and TikTok, and watch that feed because it is insane what shows up there. <laughs> oh, I bet. Oh, I bet. We should point yeah. out. Yeah. Nostradamus way. predicted this. Anybody yeah. who thinks the a Chinese will arise in the West. are communists has not been paying close attention. Oh my God, this please. is a capitalist I, I nation, have, without doubt. I have uh, people who have signed on to my site specifically to tell me about the C. Is it the CCP, CCP or the CPP? Yeah, the whatever Chinese it is. Communist Party. Yeah. <laughs> in oh name boy. only. In name yeah. only. I mean, it's definitely a capitalist nation. It's not uh, not to say it's not totalitarian, but it is capitalist. Right, capitalist. right. It's, yeah, it's kind of the best of both worlds. The government owns everything, it. but it's still capitalist. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <All right. laughs> Windows 10. Uh, the gift yeah, that yeah. keeps on giving. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. So every month, Ad Duplex is nice enough to give us a usage report. And you may recall, I mean, the past... Two months, the uh, win the latest version of Windows 10, Windows 10 version 2004, has uh, grown very, very slowly. I think it was seven point something the first month, 11.6 the second month. But now, as of the end of uh, August, it is on 24% of Windows 10 PCs. So that's, that's actually pretty fantastic. 
um, meaning that usage share has more than doubled month over month. So people like Mary Jo, uh, who experienced uh, this thing appearing all of a sudden, in, in your case, on a Surface laptop, but other Surface devices, other PCs, uh, there was a Microsoft, uh, I don't know if it was a post, but they through their, mm -hmm. you know, the, the docs uh, site they have uh, explaining uh, what the um, blockers are and so forth. They removed a bunch of them um, in early August. And so I think we're finally seeing the the impact of that. So Maybe. there you go. I think 25%. Three months after general availability and maybe one or two months before the next version isn't a great number, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, it's terrible. But I mean, I'm just, you know, based on how it went the first two months. Um, yeah. The, the other kind of, I don't have it, I, don't, I didn't do the picture. Um, the other thing that was kind of interesting is, you know, obviously 1903 and 1909 together combined are the majority of installs. I think it was a first of this month, this past month that 1909 became the most used version of Windows 10. And by a pretty mm -hmm. wide margin, right? It's a simple upgrade. I mean, it's not a big mm -hmm. deal, obviously, but it's interesting. I think it just flipped the switch uh, where 35% mm -hmm. of all Windows 10 installs are on 1909 and 24% are on, oh no, that's 2004, I'm sorry. Oh, 33.5, yeah, so it's still pretty close. But 1903 and 1905 combined are obviously over two thirds of all of the installs of Windows 10. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. What else we got? What is uh what is wireless display? Was that the thing that Intel announced? Because I remember no, no. I called it Y die and they didn't like that. Uh, tied to that? No, it's not that. It's so not that okay. It what really is is Miracast, right? So oh, Miracast. most people are right. familiar oh. with mm -hmm. Google or Chromecast, this idea that you have like a device like a phone and you can beam it to a a display that has this built in or if you have a dongle or whatever, right? So if you if you have a Chromecast, uh, of, uh, like a video capable Chromecast on your TV or it's built in from your Android handset, you can mirror the screen of your phone up on the display and you can watch movies and do photo slideshows and stuff like that. And, you know, honestly, Chromecast is pretty good. It's pretty reliable. It works well. Miracast is a, a sort of an open standard that Microsoft supports and also Samsung supports. It's uh, it's very unreliable in my experience, at least. Uh, Microsoft makes a dongle so you can put Americast capability onto your TV. A lot of TVs have it built in, like Samsung smart TVs have this built in. Um, but there is a, a little known feature in Windows 10 where you can actually use your, uh, your PC screen as a wireless display. So instead of beaming it to like an actual standalone display, you could beam it to your PC. Why would you do that? Um, probably because you have something on your phone you want to show the people and the, t and the computer is the um, uh, the biggest screen that is available at the time. The, it's, it, it's, it also does, I mean, your uh, Windows 10 also supports the ability to project your display wirelessly to a Miracast display, right? That's the more standard usage. So um, in that case, what you're doing is it's like you're adding a second display to your computer, but you're doing it wirelessly. So wireless display is both of those things. It's in both directions. Um, unt well, until last week, <laughs> wireless display was built into Windows 10, just a feature mm -hmm. of Windows 10. And back in May, when Microsoft released its two separate lists of features in Windows 10 that were being deprecated or removed in Windows 10, wireless display was not on either list. But we noticed, I, I noticed this because I was testing it with the Samsung thing. It's it's optional now. It's like an optional feature. And I'm like, what the, what's going on here? Mm. As it turns out, Microsoft actually added it in August to the features that are being removed from Windows 10 list. Just kind of out of the blue. Mm. I don't think they've ever done that before. Usually you get the I list know. and we're done. And then go to the next version. And don't, don't you usually get a preview of what's going to be added to the list too? Like it doesn't just show up usually like that, right? Well, I, I believe this is the first time it's ever happened. Yeah. I, I, I just, I'm not... So I don't know what to say. Anyway, it, it's still there. I mean, if you want it, you know, if you're familiar, like it's in um, it's in settings under optional features. Um, you, I'm going to bring it up now just to look. Yeah, if you click add a feature and you type wireless, wireless display will appear typically for most people. Um, you have to have a Wi-Fi based computer for that to work. Um, Do a lot of so people there. use this, by the way, no. I, like based on what you've seen? No. Nope. Right. Not at all. No. It's one of those things I kind of cover for the book because it's there. Microsoft went yeah. with Miracast for whatever. I think Microsoft went with Miracast because of the two-way 
functionality. Mm-hmm. And it's also maybe that's as a smart protocol or whatever in the sense that yeah. it can – you could configure it so that it works with like a connected keyboard and mouse and do all that kind of stuff. But that actually doesn't work mm-hmm. in Windows, but you think it would. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I I mean uh, – no. Obviously, yeah. like a Windows mobile phone back in the day would, you know, if it, you could do a wireless mm-hmm. display, that would use Miracast. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The 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 biggest use of Miracast today probably is Samsung. Samsung still builds right. it into their smart TVs. They, uh, the DeX feature from uh, that Samsung has for their high-end devices supports wireless DeX now through Miracast. And, uh, Can it, it work does without the, Miracast? No, DeX? it has, you know, you have to have Miracast. Oh, okay. I mean, most like for example, on a, on a Samsung smart TV, it never it doesn't say Miracast anywhere. Right. It's just right. I don't know what they call it, Samsung Smart Connect or something. It's Miracast. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I this is this is curious. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't ever talk to people who ask me about Miracast, so I was curious if that many people ever even use it. Yeah. So I have a I, so my tip today is actually about this feature. So I'll just kind of hold off on that bit of it okay. until later. Okay. But. but it is. It's one of those things that's been in Windows since day one. In Windows 10, I'm sorry, since day one. Mm-hmm. Um, virtually nobody knows about it. I, I should say yeah. the ability to use a, a second display wirelessly using Miracast has been in Windows 10 from day one. They added a Connect app. Late, I don't remember what version, but some version of Windows 10 added this for the reverse wireless display, where your computer is a wireless display mm-hmm. for yeah. some other device. Hmm. It's just weird. Okay. I just yeah. I, I don't. I'm pretty sure this has never happened before. Hmm. So I don't know why. Yeah. Well, speaking change. of weird, I don't know if you guys saw this. Um, there's another newly discovered blocker for Windows 10 oh, 2004. Oh my God! Of course, like COVID. You're gonna have specs. Yeah. Yeah. So this is for people who have PCs with. Um, wireless wide area network LTE modem. So it's fairly specialized. WW, uh, sorry, yeah. WAN LTE modems, right? And so if you have this in your PC, Microsoft is now putting a hold on you getting Windows 10 2004 because um, it could result in devices not being able to connect to the internet or not waking <laughs> from sleep. <laughs> oh, good. I wonder if that's I know. my laptop. Yeah. You know hmm. what's funny? Okay, why did this just show up now? Here's another one of those. Like, why is this only being found now? There's something wrong. You know, I I feel like we've had this basic conversation about <laughs> Windows 10 releases for years, where th- there's something wrong with the the process, right? And it feels yeah. like it's something that should have been not fixed, but it should never have been a problem. Like, it seems like this type of thing should have shown itself during the testing period, which, by the way, right. this version of Windows was the longest one ever. Right. And <laughs> of Windows 10. Um, yeah. It, it never came up during the beta, at least yep. to my knowledge. And then uh, the thing ships, and all of a sudden there's like 11 or 12 known issues that were never known before, at least to the public. Mm-hmm. And now after the fact, like you're saying, all of a sudden here's another one. Yeah. I mean, it's it's weird. Like it's – It is weird. It's very and, and it's just kind of a, be a veil adding of stuff after there. the beta period or something, right? Well, adding like they have regressions. Can we have updates? On. Yeah, regressions. Yeah, they are regressions. That's for sure. <laughs> stuff that worked well, previously, and then something changed, and yeah. then they yeah. stopped working. And I think this a lot of speaks a little bit to the spaghetti about. code nature of <laughs> Windows. Yeah. Well, that, this, right. Yeah. This could be very yeah. The problem with legacy code. Because by yeah. all accounts, you know, Windows 10 version 2004 is a fairly minor update. And there are benefits to that because um, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of churn. You don't have a lot to learn or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But obviously something has changed because there's there's been a lot of these kinds of weird problems. What you mm-hmm. might think of as low-level problems. Yep. And I have a personal oh. example to add. Yes. <laughs> Mary Jo, 2 Windows 10 0. Uh-oh. <laughs> so remember last week when we were about to start Windows Weekly and I said I couldn't get my Ethernet to work? Right. Right. So for the past week, for hours on end, I have been working on trying to fix that. Um, and e- Microsoft even provided me with one of their escalation engineers to try to help me who could not. Um, 
so I narrowed it down after looking through all different settings and I'm like, whatever happened, it happened on August 18th. So I went back and looked and that was the day I installed Windows 10 2004. Um, so I kept trying everything. I was just searching on the internet randomly. Does anyone have, else have ethernet issues after installing 2004? Finally, I found somebody who did. And it, the person said, all you need to do is download display link drivers. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense, right? Display yeah, link drivers? I, she told me that and I said, display <laughs> link drivers. What is display link? So I'm like, that's, that's video, right? Sounds like it should be yeah, for a display. Right. But for the dock I use, which is the Dell Universal D6000, just a generic um, USB dock, it does have display link in it. So I said, right. you know what? It can't hurt. So I downloaded the drivers yesterday, restarted my machine, and it worked. Oh, my God. It's Display Link <laughs> Plus. It's really you know the dock drivers. But we should have asked I, I Mary Jo God. if she was using a, a dock. because I had this problem, too. Oh. I was saying, I was joking with Mary Jo, you know, did you get struck by lightning? Because I kind of attribute that to my um, Ethernet yeah. problems. As you're yeah. talking, I look down at my dock, because you said dock, and that's how my brain works. Yeah. And I have a pluggable dock. It has a sticker on it. You know what the sticker says? Display, Display link. link. Yep. <laughs> and now I'm wondering mm. if that's the Try problem it. with my Ethernet. Mm. So yeah, all incredible. I can say is the dock worked before I installed Windows 10 2004 and it did not work after I installed it. So I still cannot say with 100% certainty that this is what caused it, but I'd say 99.99. Make a random now. aside to the story because <laughs> I, Mary Jo, an investigative reporter by trade, faced with a technical <laughs> issue like this did what she does when she's chasing a story she researched <laughs> she found the answers no i'm serious it's it's impressive i mean i i gave you the couple of basic troubleshooting so you steps you can take to whatever. try yep yeah Which I they, tried. you know they didn't work and and by the way you're talking to a person here this so-called uh, technical person i have a, an ethernet jack that doesn't work <laughs> as we're talking it doesn't work uh so uh -huh. I, you know, I'm just saying, like, it's it, it's interesting, you know? So Display yeah. Link does, in fact, impact Ethernet. I'm looking it up. It's a yes. mislabeled technology. Yep. Uh, right. This is on the Display Link page. Display Link has a range of devices to support different technology needs from USB 2 to USB 3, Ethernet, and yep. a full range of monitors. So it is a set of drivers. This is incredible. It's actually a chipset. But it's a, and then the set of yep. drivers that affect all uh, functions of the chipset would include Ethernet. Ethernet. Yep. So that's exactly yep. it. You know, know. That means 2004 had a, probably had a bad display link driver. She told me about this the other day. I congratulated her. <laughs> I never thought about it beyond that, uh, yeah. other than, you know, she was successful doing this thing. Good for her. I have, I might literally have the same problem. That's how stupid After the I show, am. go get the display link. Oh, I'm drivers. told it's the I'm first thing I'm going to do. Yep. Yep. That's hysterical. Yeah. I know. Unbelievable. So, you know, my motto in telling this story is the problem with doing all these feature updates for Microsoft is everybody has a different combination of things. It's not like Apple, right? Like people have an Apple PC. They've got a set kind of a set configuration. You have different peripherals, sure. But with Windows 10, we're all running different PCs, different chips. Different devices yeah. connected to it. So how do you ever, ever check? Not to mention, for, uh, related right? to this, there are, there are multiple places you can go for drivers. If right. you, Depending on your PC, you obviously have Windows Update. Yep. You can have that Intel web-based driver utility, which is yeah. useful and can work well. Your yep. PC maker typically will have one, right? So in mm -hmm. your case, uh, is this computer that's attached to the dock, what is it? Is it a... Surface Laptop 3. So, okay, yeah. so all, Microsoft doesn't have that. So that everything you get goes yeah. to Windows Update. But you, but you have uh, the ability to download uh, dr bulk driver sets from Microsoft for Surface, right? Mm -hmm. This is like this weird other app that, you know, most people right. would never have gotten to this conclusion. By the way, including yeah. that Microsoft support that helped you. No, when I right? told it's him, I even... sent him an email and he goes, wow, I never would have thought of that. Thanks for telling me for future reference. <laughs> well, but, the, you know, we had a missing, I had a missing piece. I would have guessed it if you'd told me you're using a dock. You would have? Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you told me you're using okay. a dock, I would have said, well, first thing is try the Ethernet direct on the laptop yeah. instead of through a dock. I did. I, so Paul told me that and I tried it and it wouldn't work with that either. Even then it wouldn't work. Oh, nope. That's weird. Yeah. I wonder if you're. Well, okay. I'm using a, an Ethernet dongle directly to the computer to bypass the Ethernet that doesn't work in the dock. 
because I'm an idiot. <laughs> so but I just want to stress. The but because you, so if you'd upgraded to 2004 without the dock, you wouldn't yeah. have got this funky driver. Well, it's possible, clearly a funky yeah. driver, which is then screwed up even with when or, you're not uh, there's it. an incompatibility there with well wait uh, yeah how, like how would you get how would you get drivers for the dock? You'd because have to have a utility plug and play saw it. Okay. Right? I don't um know. so when I unplugged the dock and then I um replugged right. it yeah. to try to get it to recognize it after I uninstalled it from the device manager. Yeah. It saw it. But it, it said the driver installation failed. That's what it kept saying. Oh, that's interesting. So there is definitely a problem. So, Windows has a display link. Uh, this is really upsetting. I think Windows has its own display link software. That's maybe part of the problem, too. Oh, really? Does it? Because I went to displaylink.com, I think, is the page, and got it got the display yeah. link driver. From, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I felt like an IT pro well after done. I completed that this task. That was well done. Yeah. This was yeah. me in my home. I was like, yes. Well, and I'm making a note of it because I'm sure somebody will call the radio show. This is exactly the kind of question people call yeah. the radio show. My Ethernet doesn't work. What could I do? Yep. <laughs> so I was that's searching a good one. Twitter. I'm like searching Windows 2004 and Ethernet. And then I found two guys um, who had the issue and I... I asked them both on Twitter and they were like, no, but let us help you try to debug this. I'm like, okay, the whole community is coming together. This is great. Nice. You know? <laughs> it does. It's, it's Did you find an article? I mean, is that how you learned about it? Or Yeah, I found a Reddit article um, where the guy said, it's my display link driver. And I'm like, what? What? And I'm like, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> but once you know so display link is more link. than just, it's, it's more than displays, display. it's the driver for the yep. entire dock. Yeah. So I went mm -hmm. to display link dot com and I said, wait, it has Ethernet drivers in it. Wait. <laughs> yep. Yep. How about that? Interesting. Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? It does explain though how these things can creep in because you you nailed yes. it, Mary Jo. This is such a heterogeneous environment. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although you would think a lot of Dell computer users have dis have Dell docks. It's a Dell yeah. doc, yeah, right? It's a it's a Dell dock connected to Surface Laptop 3. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you, there you go. Else does, right? Like it's a it's this USB dock. But it's, it's a got universal whatever dock. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to work with anything. It's like a very standard chipset. It's probably yeah. the same thing that's inside my dock, but it's sold by Pluggable instead of Dell, right? I mean, they just, you know, they kind of yeah. put their branding on it. They make a case. It's a, It's their yeah. own thing. Yeah. Mary Jo, you get the Propeller Beanie of the Week Award. Woo. Congratulations. Woo. We should have we should have a propeller beanie that one of the other of you has to wear <laughs> right. until it's taken away by the other one. Exactly. And then we just ship it to the other person. If I were if I were a good podcaster, I'd be doing that right now. Oh, we could just add a propeller to our twit fezes. Oh, there you go. Ooh. Oh, a <laughs> propeller fez. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and there's then there's, there's, uh, yeah. okay. Then there's, <laughs> we're done with that segment. We're done. Yeah, we're done okay. with Windows Let's 10. Let's talk Surface. Well, sort of done with Windows 10, because this story is a Windows 10 story also. Oh, yep. it's not Surface as yes. you know it, it's Surface Hub. Surface Hub. Right. You know those big, Giant surfaces, the ones 55 inch or 80 something inch surfaces, those are the hubs, right? So last year, when we could travel uh, in April, there was a big Surface Hub um, announcement in New York. And uh, Microsoft announced at that event that they were working on a way to allow users to run Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise on Surface Hub 2S. So right now, Surface Hub 2S ships with a version of Windows 10 called Team. It's called Windows 10 Team, and it's built oh, just wait. for the service. Can I ask about that? I, I, yes. I can't. I don't think I've ever heard that term before until I saw this article from Microsoft. I always thought of it as, yeah. as Surface Hub OS. No, it's when always been called they, Team. Officially. It's always been called Team. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Knew, so they said that. last year that they were going to do this because some people had um, use cases where they wanted to run regular Windows 10 on the device and not use it as a conferencing system where you had to go walk up to it and do things on it with the, with the pen or, you know, however you interact with it. Um, so yeah. yesterday they actually announced that you now can do this. So if you decide to do it 
and migrate your Surface Hub 2S over to run uh, Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise, you now get a whole bunch of capabilities that you didn't have if you were running Windows uh, 10, sorry, Windows 10 Team on Surface Hub 2S. Like you can run apps that are not just store apps. You can run Win32 64 apps on the Surface Hub 2S if you put the regular yeah. Windows on it, right? Um, and you can do things like use uh, Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection on it, which you can't do right now if you're running the Team OS. So you lose some things by not having the Team OS because it's optimized for the Surface Hub 2S. Um, but I feel like for some people who just want to use it, like there, there are people who like this. There are people who have it in their house, right, or in their office, <laughs> yeah, <maybe>. but that's... <laughs> where they're by so, themselves now, right, and they can use it like a, like it's like a giant surface. That's what yeah. it's like. I, I, the thing that's interesting about this is that COVID happened, and all right. of a sudden, this this expensive product, which is designed for people sitting in the same room at work, collaborating yep. together on one screen, yep. it's not that useful anymore, right? We don't. There exactly. aren't a lot of people doing that right now. Yep. So th that you can sort of retrofit, it's like putting a modern engine in a classic car. You know, it's weird. Like you can, yes. you can sort of retrofit this system with a normal yep. version of Windows 10, which is something you log into as an individual. It's not designed for groups of people, and you yep. get all the standard benefits and uh, I guess whatever the cons are of of normal Windows 10 for desktop. And yep. um, you know, again, I, I, it's weird to me that they thought of this before COVID, but. Yeah, it is yeah. kind of the perfect response to COVID for this product that, mm -hmm. like I said, is very expensive and now is just not being used, you know, in yep. most places. Right. So it gives yeah. it kind of a, a second use while the pandemic is occurring and then hopefully we can go mm -hmm. back to normal or some form of normal later. But <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. You know, whatever that means. But that's interesting. Yeah. I know. So at that same event last year, they also announced they were going to make a Surface Hub display like without the compute, right? Like, because so many people just wanted the hub giant screen, but they didn't care if it was a computer. They just wanted to use it like a monitor, right? And they said they were going to build that and have that available too. And so far they have not um, announced that or made it available. So that makes or, me wonder. I mentioned it again. <laughs> I wonder if there'll yeah. be a fall event like this year, yeah. like a fall surface event where maybe they trot that out. They should send out uh, Surface Hubs to everybody so we can watch it remotely. They should. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know where good. I put it in here, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll find a way. I would you find a way. You need something for that yeah. Xbox you're going to get, so. Yeah, oh, yeah. Saying. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Surface Hub tied to an Xbox. That's living. Yep. Yeah, that That's would all. be. <laughs> That's living. Yep. Actually, we have Xbox news. We're going to get to that. Also, Microsoft 365 news. But first, a word from our sponsor, Barracuda. You know there's threats hiding in your email. Oh, man. You know 91% of all cyber attacks start with an email. And I bet you know the name Barracuda. I think a lot of you do. Perhaps the best-known name when it comes to cloud-enabled enterprise-grade security solutions. Email, networks, data applications. Now, here's why you have to know about Barracuda's total email protection. You have employees working from home, maybe a dozen, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands. And you know that 91% of all those attacks, those phishing attacks, mo mostly uh, those ransomware and spear phishing attacks, they start in email. And you know those employees are getting hundreds of emails every day, and they don't have anybody looking over their shoulder. They're not safe at the office. They're on their networks at home. Think about spear phishing and ransomware and account takeover and conversation hijacking. Now multiply all those emails by all those employees, and suddenly the attack surface seems pretty big. And one click, just one, on the wrong email can cost you money, can cost you customers, can cost you your reputation. Just ask the folks at Norsk Hydro, the big, one of the biggest aluminum producers in the world with factories all over the world, brought down, cost them $60 million in ransomware remediation, and they were brought down by a single email. It was an expected email. This is what's scary. That's it. That's all it took. Barracuda researchers have seen a steady increase in the number of coronavirus-related spear phishing attacks 
since this all began. 667% spike since the end of February. You need total email protection. You need Barracuda. You get all-in-one email security. It also includes backup and archiving. And in many industries, that's, that's a legal requirement as much as anything else. You get AI protect from spear phishing. The reason you want AI protection is because the bad guys don't sit still. They're constantly refining. They're getting a, It's a feedback loop. For them, it's a very beneficial feedback loop. Didn't work? Try another one. Didn't work? Try another one. Oh, that's working. Let's try it somewhere else. You need the protection that moves as fast as they do to protect you from spear phishing and account takeover and email compromise. That's what happened to Norse Hydro. You also need, um, for your you know remediation purposes, an automated incident response. Because we already know the faster you respond, the faster you take action, the, the less the damage. So you need, and this is provided by Barracuda's Total Email Protection, automated incident response that gives you options right there to quickly and efficiently address attacks. You also get security awareness training for your employees because they're on the front line. They are the attack service. There are new attacks impersonating organizations right now like the World Health Organization, the CDC... Your CEO, a lot of times these spear phishing seem to come from within the company. They seem to come from the boss because they know the, the underling is much more likely to open that email and act quickly if they get a threatening email from the boss. Where is that report? I need it right now. Here's Open the attached file and fill in this form or something. Domain spoofing. That's another one where they'll, they'll say it's, it's from something like the World Health Organization. They'll promise information, you know, here's some health information you need to know. There are all sorts of tricks, but that's the beauty. Barracuda gets smarter every day. Ensure the safety and security of your business with Barracuda. Uncover the threats hiding in your inbox right now with a free scan. I know, this is a little scary. Don't you, don't you want to know? Isn't it better than hiding your head in the sand? Get a free email threat scan, no pressure, no obligation, of your Office 365 account at barracuda.com slash windows. B-A-R-R-A-C-U-D-A, B-A-R-R-A-C-U-D-A dot com slash windows. Barracuda, your journey secured. If you're running without Barracuda, you're running for trouble. Barracuda.com slash windows. So yeah, Project Mocha. Um, this is something that, and and we should have a little moment of silence. The walking cat found in February. So today, the walking cat's account was suspended on Twitter. What? Uh, yeah, he posted a bunch of. This is Intel infuriating. Stuff. <laughs> I've been yeah. trying to get. We've been trying to get accounts pulled down on Twitter for months, and they yep. keep right. sending me an, an email that says, oh, "Due to COVID, we're not going to do anything." <laughs> Wow. Yeah. They pulled the walking yeah, so cat down for what? To, well, he posted ahead of the Intel launch today a whole bunch of stuff on the 11th generation Core i7 and it was he had like everything. So he posted it all on his account and then like a few minutes later his account was suspended. So I'm guessing it was that. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> but where but are we going to get our leaks? Back. I know. He should I go hope to he comes TikTok. Back. <laughs> yeah, he should go to TikTok. <laughs> What is with anyway, Twitter? That's just, just Twitter is it's so weird. It seems random to me what they pull and what they it's don't random. pull. It's random. It's then, just completely random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, he, in February, before this happened, um, found all the stuff Microsoft had about Project Mocha, which is a new feature that they're adding to Outlook that we think is going to be ultimately called Outlook Spaces. It's being tested by some insiders and some people have said they've got it. And it's going to be first in Outlook for the web, so the web base based version of Outlook if you're a Microsoft 365 or an Office 365 user. I don't have it in my account, but other people see, say they see it. So what it is, is a space inside of Outlook where you can pin all kinds of different things. So you can pin your to-do list and your sticky notes, events, emails, um, results from searches that you do on the web and have it all in one place so that you can work with everything together. I'm not sure I would use this, but um, yeah. other people say, this is amazing. This is going to be so great for my productivity. Um, so the way, uh, when we found out about it in February, I kept asking Microsoft, 
you know, so when are you going to announce Project Mocha? Like, what? where is it? And I thought they would announce it at Build, and then I thought they would announce it at Inspire, and they didn't. And then this week, actually, I think it was last week, somebody on the engineering team did a whole blog post about Project Mocha, and when I asked Microsoft for a comment, they said, we're not talking about that right now. I said, well, you've got a blog post about it, so I guess you are. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's awesome. And so, no. They won't comment on it, but there is a blog post about it, and it just says um, it's coming out in preview to people. It's rolling out. Um, they won't say no. if Outlook Spaces will be the name. They won't say um, if it's coming out other versions of Outlook. They won't say anything else about it. That's hysterical. Yeah. I don't see spaces. I, I want spaces. Yeah, I don't have it either. So if it's a check if you have it. And if you have Outlook on the web, you go down to the far left corner on that left-hand navigation bar where you can see a mm -hmm. little um, icon for to-do. And it's supposed to be right there alongside to-do or with to-do. Or if yeah. you see an ellipsis, you can click on that and see it. But I, I don't see it in my yeah. account at all. I don't see yeah. it either. No. This is commercial only, right, though? I right. Or think. Outlook <laughs> I think so. Um, yeah. That's my guess, but mm. I would think it would make sense for this to come also to Microsoft 365 um, consumer oh, brands sorry. too. So I have it. I do have it in Outlook.com. I, I don't have you it. You have in an Outlook.com. <laughs> yep. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, so Project I don't have it Mocha anywhere. Preview. Interesting. Yep, I don't have it anywhere myself. So yeah. So you can check Outlook.com. I guess that that wasn't even listed yeah. in the blog post as one of the places it was supposed to show up. <laughs> so. And it literally says Project Mocha. It doesn't even have it like does. A, it doesn't say Outlook Spaces. It says Project yeah. Mocha. It's supposed to be in preview mm. still at this point, um, and not final. It is, but yep. yeah. So you know what's curious to me about this? So isn't this what Collections is supposed to do in Edge? Isn't that like also a place where you're supposed to be able to pull a bunch of things in there and like I don't know. I, the redundancies across Microsoft's product line is are amazing. I, I know. All, there are a lot of them. There's a million yeah. ways to do the same things. Yeah, it's true. Well, this is yeah. what I get when I uh, click Project Mocha. So, <laughs> Ooh, that's yeah, not good. Too. I don't get it. <laughs> that's don't get no, it. This says, this says oh, weekly plan, project plan. My subscription plan. is no longer open. <laughs> Personal oh. wellness. Uh, <laughs> interesting. This wouldn't be on uh, uh, individual accounts, right? Well, we don't well, really know. Well, it is for me, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't see it on my, uh, I guess, Microsoft 365 commercial account, which I expected yeah. to see it. I do yeah. see it on Outlook.com, which is kind of curious, but there it is. No, I'm curious if I see it. Nope, it's not on mine at all. Hmm. Either either of my Outlooks there, so. Yeah. Anyway, I, it, say, when people start so getting it, I'm curious if people will use this and how they'll use it or what, you know, kind of, I feel like you can already do this in mm -hmm. OneNote and you can do some of this in Collections and Edge. So I'm kind of curious about it yeah. also being available as a Well, the, as a the feature trick is going to be getting it everywhere, right? So yeah. the ability to access this from the web is interesting, but I that's not yeah. typically how I access this account. Yep. Yep. I don't know. It's early. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I see you have a machine that goes bing. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I don't. But <laughs> we, yeah, so um, some number of weeks ago, I think we probably discussed the fact that some people were seeing Microsoft Bing with the Microsoft logo on Bing sub pages, suggesting mm -hmm. that maybe they were rebranding it. And moving to that instead of just Bing. And the other day, I, I I don't remember how I saw someone noted that this was they were seeing it on the homepage, and so I checked it, and sure enough, on the homepage now, I was seeing the Microsoft logo instead of the Bing logo. And it said Microsoft mm -hmm. Bing, and I thought interesting. Maybe they're, you know, they're in the process of maybe switching it over. Um, during the last ad, I checked Bing.com just to check it out again, and it's back to the old logo. <laughs> so I yeah. don't know what to say anymore. So I guess the the it's a question. That's why in the notes it's like, are they rebranding Bing? Uh, yeah. it, there is evidence that that might be. Um, I think it makes sense. I don't think Bing is a particularly good brand. I think Microsoft is a great mm -hmm. brand. Um, I, I, you know, I I know in mm -hmm. keeping with the commercial ver. If you sign into 
being with a commercial Microsoft 365 account, of course, you get access to that Microsoft search functionality um, where you can search for people or uh, skills or whatnot inside of your organization, which is really useful. Um, and maybe it's just tied to a screw up related to that. I mean, who knows? But I, I sign into Bing like I sign into my browser with my personal account. So I, I can't quite explain why I saw what yeah. I saw before. But um, yeah, I yeah, think you're doing A B testing, don't you think? I think yeah, like sometimes yeah. I've seen, you know what I've seen sometimes on sub pages is just the Microsoft logo in place of the Bing logo, but no words, like no Bing or Microsoft Bing. Oh, it interesting. just is okay, the Microsoft so logo. Yeah but, yeah, but how do you get results on A B testing? It's not like one in well, I guess I've seen two different things. So but it's not like yeah. okay, so I've seen something different. Where do I go to tell them that I don't like it? <laughs> you know? I know. Right. Strange. Maybe they're watching social media to see people if people are commenting like, is that a new yeah. rebrand of Bing or like what happened? I don't know. I've, whenever they switched the logos over, they went to those Angular logos. I think the Bing one yeah. got the short end of the stick. I don't think it's a very good logo. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the Bing brand is very good, like I said. Microsoft is probably one of the most trusted brands in the world or in the United States, certainly. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, look, they could just call it Microsoft Search, whatever. But if they want to yeah. keep Bing for some reason, Microsoft Bing, I yeah. think makes sense. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they do. <sighs> It'd be <Yep>. sad. <laughs> We'd have to have a little day. Bing funeral. Yeah. Mm. No, no one's going to mourn this thing. <laughs> you know, in, if Although, you by use the way, Bing... <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say if you use Bing internally, like remember Bing for Business, where they were playing around with that mm -hmm. idea of using Bing to surface um, results from your own corporation search internally, like intranet search. That's called yeah. Microsoft Search. That's not called Bing anymore at okay. all. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. If you're, and by the way, I do, you know, and you do too. I'm sure, Mary Jo. Like, uh, we, I hear from people regularly every time. You know, if you make fun of Bing, you'll always hear from the the three guys who're like, "Hold on yeah. a second, I use Bing. I really like Bing." And, yeah. uh, you know, if you're a Microsoft guy, they have, this is a Bring Rewards program. You, you mm -hmm. could just sit there every day and play a couple of little mini games. Like they're usually kind of like quizzes, like about different, you know, mm -hmm. like what's the highest mountain in the world, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. And you add up yeah. points. And then over time, you can redeem those points for things like Xbox Live uh, Gold or whatever. And so, you know, I've, I've heard from people, okay, like, hey, I paid for whatever Xbox thing with this. or So yeah. it's not like they're paying you to use it exactly. But, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Some people seem to like it. All right, I've been putting it off as long as I can, but I think we better do some <laughs> Xbox yeah, news. Let's just get it over with. All right. <laughs> go yeah, have a, like, one of those uh, adult gotta, cocktails, yeah. Mary Jo. And Every so often <laughs> you go to the doctor and you have to get a bunch of shots. And that's what today is. This is it. This is so, your Xbox <laughs> shot. <laughs> yep. Because uh, there is a bunch of stuff. So um, uh, the Xbox Series S is a product that Microsoft has not announced. It has leaked multiple times this year. Uh, Brad Sams, I think, was the first person to report on this literally December 2018, to give wow. you an idea how long ago that was. Um, Brad, unfairly, has been kind of um, ridiculed in some quarters from people who are saying, you're making this up. Microsoft has never announced this thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, time's gone on. And it is kind of weird that Sony has come out and said, look, here, we have two consoles. Here they are. And Microsoft has come out and said, hey, we have one console. Here it is. But they actually have two. And the other one is called Series S. And you can kind of understand the positioning. Today we have Xbox One S, which is the entry-level machine. We have Xbox One X, which actually they don't make anymore, but that was the high-end machine. So for the Series series, you know, Series X, Series S, it makes sense. Um, the last leak we got was like a – it was like someone had somehow gotten a, a hold of – I think it was an image of, a, of the box for the next generation hand controller, and it actually mentioned Series S – this week's leak is even better because someone went and bought a, a an Xbox wireless controller just in a store, I think in a Best Buy or something. <laughs> not a next-gen console, uh, not a uh, controller, just a normal one. And it literally lists Xbox Series X and oh, Series X. my God. In the compatible list of, you know. So, guys, it's <laughs> I, real. I told you. I told you it was real. I wasn't making it up. I told you it was real. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, I, Microsoft is probably holding off on announcing it because it's related to the pricing thing, which is this game of chicken that Sony and Microsoft are engaged in because this year everything's weird. They can't have a giant event at E3 where they kind of blast out everything at one time. And they're kind of drip dripping stuff out, you know, event, virtual event by virtual event. And I think the final piece of the puzzle for both, both companies is 
the pricing on these consoles. Like they both want to come in under the other guy. Oh, they're way, playing I'll chicken. Remember what happened last time? It's a game of chicken. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the Series S is caught in that because that's the one where if they have to sell it at a little bit of a loss, they probably will just to get it under right. whatever the PS5 is. So that's wow. my guess. But wow. they're they're obviously holding on tight to this thing. For some stupid reason. Is that the one um, I want or no? I want the Series no, X. No, you want the S. You want the yeah. X. So yeah. the X is 4K, 60 frames a second, pretty much guaranteed, not 100%, but 60 frames per second, asterisk most of the time. But yeah, that's the good one. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's September, by the way. I'm sure you've all noticed because, you know, time has meaning. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> as each month rolls over, we get a, a new set of games with gold for those people of Xbox Live Gold accounts. And we also get a the first half of the uh, Game Pass titles that are coming this month. So this month with games for gold, the big one, this is actually a really good game, is The Division, that Tom Clancy game. Uh, Xbox One title, so that's available now. So if you're on X, if you're if you have an Xbox Live Gold account, you can get that now for free. Recommend that. And then looking at the uh, Game Pass stuff, this is these are games that are for PC and or uh, console. Um, so if you have Ultimate, some of them run both. You can get both. You can get it on either one. There's a couple of big things happening this month. One is this. Uh, there's a series. It's a three game series or a three chapter game called Tell Me Why, which is brand new, which is kind of an interesting, you know, mystery. I talked a few weeks ago about like games you could play with people or non-gamers. This was a good example of one. It's not it doesn't require dexterity or it's just puzzle solving and interactive story and the story kind of unfolds. So that's really interesting. And then uh, the it's the previous uh, gen uh, Resident Evil game which I already um, completed, so I'm not going to play it again. But Resident Evil Biohazard is a great game. Uh, that's part of it. That one and the other uh, uh, Tell Me Why are both console and PC. And then just on PC, uh, World War Z is kind of a big game as well. So those are all either here or are coming in the first half of the month uh, during September. And then, you know, mid-month, we'll hear about the second half of the month. That's, so a, that's, lot of, that's a lot of good titles. That's yeah, good. a lot of good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you know, these things come through and you're like, eh, you know, like whatever. Right. Uh, this month's really good. And uh, this just happened this morning, but Microsoft announced it was refreshing its Design for Xbox logo program. So the uh, little badge you get on like uh, compatible peripherals is, you know, it's just got a new look or whatever. Actually, I think it looks kind of old school. It's kind of, it's almost old fashioned looking. It's kind of neat. It's like the it's good, green, ho the good green, housekeeping. The level. green button on the box. Yeah. If you scroll down, you can see just the logo. Um, so, you know, controllers, um, headsets, other peripherals uh, will have this logo. This means, and so it, 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 the new theme of this is continuous compatibility, meaning these are things that work across console generations. So not all of these, by the way, but most of them will work on all Xbox One and all Xbox Series X and then eventually S um, consoles. It, there are some weird differences, like the the battery shape, the rechargeable battery shape for the Xbox, the new Xbox controller for the new series is a little different, but some of the charging stands will support both somewhat, you know, so you have to, you might have to look at the side of the box for the details, but most things will work across both generation. Also a bunch of new partners on board, including uh, Bang & Olufsen, which is kind of cool. And um, there's a company called Honeycomb Aeronautical, as their name suggests. They make uh, flying type things, <laughs> which means they have like awesome, you know, yoke stick thing, you know, like the controllers Ooh. for Flight Sim. Flight Sim um, has, so by the way, been a huge success. I yeah. mean, yep. these controllers are sold out. People are going crazy getting this well, new. People are doing things like uh, that hurricane was coming through Louisiana. They're flying in It has real time weather from yeah. things, so the people were flying into the hurricane that, just to uh, kind of witness the Isn't that awesome? Crazy. I think that's really cool. You got to think, people there are like, why didn't we do this 10 years ago? Like, what are we doing? Like, <laughs> they literally didn't sell this game for like uh, some, you know, 15 years or whatever. It's stupid. Really? So that's amazing. kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's really taken off. Um, this was also an announcement from, uh, well, not probably last night, but um, there is a series of technologies that are built into Xbox Series X that are related to making everything move as quickly as possible. So one of the cool things that happens in this console is it has an NVMe-based SSD drive, thank God, instead of like an old clunky, you know, Winchester-style, you know, physical hard drive, obviously much faster. But they have a new API to make things really pump through this thing really quickly called direct storage. And what they announced this week was, Microsoft, uh, they're bringing direct storage to Windows 10 for PC so you can get the same benefits on a gaming PC. It's not going to support every single NVMe drive, and we don't have any details on that quite yet. So it's going to be certain 
systems with NVM drives that can use this, meaning that you'll get incredible throughput and um, it will just cause loading screens to you know kind of click by really quick, um, which is a huge problem on consoles today. Um, it's not coming out anytime soon, which is the other issue. So they're expecting to get a developer preview out sometime next year. I would imagine holiday 2021 is going to be the earliest we actually see this. But that's, that's cool. Like they're, It's cool they're making these things the same, I guess, work the same across PC and console. Yeah. The other one is just a little bit of bad news. It affects me personally, so I thought I'd share my pain with everybody. But oh, no. uh, Activ <laughs> announced the next Call of Duty, which is actually great. It's... um. Black Ops Cold War. It looks awesome. I don't know if you've seen the trailer. It's got a Ronald Reagan in it. It's kind of interesting. It's a sequel to the original Black Ops. So that's great. But going against Microsoft's public wishes, <laughs> where they said, look, we don't want people, developers, to charge extra for getting a game that's going to work on, in this case, Xbox One and Xbox Series X. You should just be able to buy the one game. Works across both. And Activision's like, yeah, we're going to do that, but... It's, we're going to charge you extra for that. So you can buy a version of the game just for Xbox One. You can buy a version of the game just for Xbox One Series. I'm sorry, Xbox Series X. Or you can buy a version of the game that works on both. And that version is 10 bucks more expensive because Activision is terrible. <laughs> and there's nothing we can do about that. So at least it's only 10 bucks. But I think you're also work. hurt because this is PlayStation 5 footage. Yeah. So, you know, two, three years ago, whenever that was, they uh, signed a deal with... Um, Sony, where that that's the preferred platform for um, Call of Duty, which is another knife that's still embedded in my back I'll never get rid of. Um, and what that means is we get DLC and other things more slowly than they get them on the PlayStation. And I, another reason to hate Activision. Like I needed one more reason. <laughs> it does look, I have to say it looks really it looks good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love the premise. It's like 1968, 1970. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're fighting against the commies. Yeah, so this should, I, I would imagine because it's a black. I'm, I'm actually playing the the current. Well, the, it's last year's Black Ops game. This is apparently going to use the same game engine, which means it's probably going to run awesome. Uh, because I, like I said, I think I said this last week. I, I can't stand Modern Warfare. It just doesn't work for me. And this game is not going to use that engine. It's actually going to use the the pre, whatever the previous Black uh, Black Ops engine was. So that's good. You, you weren't kidding. Ronald Reagan actually is in the game. Yeah. Yep. They have a voice actor that really closely mimics his. Is he a non-player uh, character? <laughs> yeah. No. You know. Yeah. I could run around. By, by the way, I mean, knowing Activision, Ronnie, probably that would let's be play. It. Let's go. Let's yep. go. Oh, do you want to get the Are you in Vietnam? Yeah, I guess you are. Huh? Yeah, because it's sixties through the eighties. Right, right. Well, it's Cold, it's Cold War, right? So it's Cold War is I probably. 60s I know you the, won't fail us. Yep. Oh wow, Ronnie says I know <laughs> you won't fail us. Wow. Yep. Don't make me go Libya on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yep. Well, mommy and I, hoping you're gonna <laughs> succeed. Uh, let's go downstairs and have some tomato soup. Trickle uh, down this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play as the Gipper. <laughs> yep. I think it'd be very the popular. Gipper skin, actually. I like it. A Gipper skin. I bet they do that. Yeah, yeah you can. I bet very that's popular. The thing. All right, we're gonna take a uh, one more break, and then the back of the book coming up, which means tips, picks, enterprise code name, and beer. We're back. <laughs> you to know the beer. typical stuff. The usual. The usual yeah. good stuff you see on this <laughs> show. Paul Thorat, Thorat.com, Mary Jo Foley, and all about Microsoft.com. Our show today brought to you by Adobe.com. Adobe Sign, to be specific. How many times do have you gotten a document? I just it drives me nuts from a realtor or a loan office or the, you know, the city manager, you know, the permit approval process where you got to, they email you and say, print this, sign it, and mail it or fax it back to us. It's like, no, why? That's not more secure. That's less secure. And it's less convenient. In fact, it's all around just dumb. It's back from the Cold War where you could be using Adobe Sign. Right now, if you're running a business with everything going on, the last thing you want to do 
is uh, is slow things down. Your business needs to keep moving. Adobe Sign makes it easy. It's Adobe Sign's processed more than eight billion transactions from millions of signers all over the world, littlest small startups to giant global enterprises. And what it's 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 these are e-signatures. They're not only legal; they're better. They're more verifiable, more efficient. Uh, and it gets the job done, you know, it gets business moving, whether it's requests for permits or construction planning or health services. You can use it for your internal operations, human resources, procurement, IT. It's employee driven, self-serve workflows. So, you know, it's, it's, your staff loves it because it makes everything so much easier, including tracking the process because you, you can enforce deadlines you could you could say for instance you got one week to sign this or the offer's off you get automatic uh, archiving of final documents a complete audit trail that's important right this is so much secure than a ink signature and it saves you time and it saves you money goodness knows there's not enough of that in the world adobe sign is as secure as you want it to be enterprise grade security and compliance uh, HIPAA compliant, FERPA compliant, GLBA compliant can be configured to uh, meet any industry specific requirements. E signatures protect sensitive information. You can be sure they're both legal and accessible, and they automatically enforce the regulatory and policy rules you need to adhere to. And I love it that you can go the step farther in terms of security. You can say, for instance, you have to provide a U.S. government ID or a certificate-based employee ID like a PIV or CAC card. Or it makes it easy to integrate e-signatures into your systems because it works with everything you work with already. Microsoft 365, Salesforce, ServiceNow, Workday, and more. And they have a very good API, so if you've got a custom solution it's a snap to include adobe sign in that and as a signer <laughs> i just gotta say we signers we love it if i get that email it says click here to sign click here to sign send this off i love that adobe sign they've got solutions for any size company and kind of company from small businesses to global enterprises contracts get signed loans get approved deals get done faster than ever before you want to know more well we're going to keep your business moving when you go to adobe.com slash business moves. Learn more about what Adobe Sign can do for your business. A-D-O-B-E, adobe.com slash business moves. Why? Well, I think it's safe to say business moves with Adobe. Adobe.com slash business moves. Adobe, thank you so much for supporting Windows Weekly. We really appreciate it. And you're supporting Windows Weekly when you go to that address. Adobe.com slash business moves. Heading to the back of the book with Paul Therat and his tip of the week. Yeah, so uh, we just talked about this wireless display feature in Windows 10 that nobody seems to know about. Um, interesting, uh, this is kind of a uh, like a work from home tip. You know, if you, if you were going to an office and you had like multiple displays, now you're home and you're working on a laptop and you're kind of missing all that real estate. Obviously, you could buy a, a screen and have two screens, right? You could buy probably multiple screens depending on your setup. But a lot of people don't know that if you have another Windows 10 PC sitting around, you can use that as a second display because this wireless display capability is two ways. So there are kind of, I guess there are three pieces to this in total. So the first thing you would need to do is go into settings and then system and projecting to this PC because you have to actually install this feature if you're running 2004. And that will add the connect app to your computer. So from that point, you can you can just search for it and start, you know, start search connect. And when you bring up connect, that computer is now available as a wireless PC, a wireless display. You can require a pin, you can, you know, uh, set up various settings. From your main computer, you just do Windows key plus P to bring up the project pane. And then you click connect to our wireless display, your other laptop or computer will show up as a wireless display. You have two displays. I, I've never tried this, but I imagine you could probably do it with three, maybe even three. I don't know if you can do probably multiple, but wireless displays work just like normal, you know, hardwired displays. You can extend the screen. You can duplicate the screen. You can use the second screen only. I mean, I, I assume in this case, most people would want to extend. So you have both displays at once, but 
Uh, if you don't have another display, but you have a laptop sitting around, it's you can just use it as a display. It's kind of a cool idea. I it's not something I do. You know, like I don't do it every day, but it's I don't do it. But it but it works, and you could try it if you if you <laughs> miss that functionality. <laughs> no, it's kind of a neat idea. I mean, I can think of some use yeah. cases. Uh, you're at a meeting. Yep. Uh, you maybe want to cast it on another display. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's well, you're stuck cool. at home. You know, like I, I, I had a friend who was home for a couple months and he finally sucked it up and bought like a chair. <laughs> you know, he's like, I got tired <laughs> of sitting at the kitchen table. I'm like, yeah, yeah it's good thinking. normal. <laughs> good <laughs> thinking. That, you know. yeah. um, but you might miss, you know, your work setup, you know, in some cases, you know, depending on where you work and what you do. I mean, some people have pretty impressive work setups, you know, but when they go home, they just have like an old laptop or something. So, this is a kind of, if you have another computer just sitting around doing nothing, just use it as a display. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that. That's a neat feature, yeah. Yeah, and like I said, I don't think most people even know it exists, so it's kind of interesting on that level as well. Um, as far as the app pick goes, uh, I almost picked YouTube Music, but I, I can't remember if I talked about that recently. But um, I had an interaction with the folks who make your phone at Microsoft kind of off the record, so I don't have any like direct quotes here or anything. But... I had written about the new Your Phone capability where you can run apps remotely in a window. And so right now it's only available on the new Samsung phones, like the Note 20 Ultra, Note 20, uh, probably the Flip Z, or the Flip 2, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, I think they because of the release of One UI 2.5, it's probably available now on several of the previous flagship devices as well. But this capability is... It's it's kind of like a V1 thing right now. So uh, what you're really doing is blasting a remote display of the the phone display into a window on Windows, and you can't run multiple apps yet. Um, it it very clearly is a remote display. There's some weirdness around things like if the phone is locked and you don't have Google's smart lock uh, configured to unlock for your computer the app will come up in the window on your computer and it has the lock screen and you have to sign in and it's like, eh. but here's the thing. This stuff is actually going to get a lot better in the near future. And um, you'll be able to run multiple apps. Those apps, if they support, you know, stretching out and working as like a tablet app, will do that. Um, and it will be a much more seamless experience. And I, I, the point here really isn't so much just this one apps feature. It's the broader your phone capability. So if you haven't looked at your phone in a while, which comes up on a huge white screen. Um, <laughs> you should look at it because uh, the two obvious, well, actually the three obvious features are uh, messages and phone calls, right? So it works kind of like if you're in the Apple ecosystem, you have an iPhone, a Mac or an iPad or whatever. Um, you can send and receive text messages from your computer, which is super useful because you get the full keyboard and everything. Uh, send and receive calls, which is kind of nice in my case. I have kind of a nice setup here. Um, and then the photos thing, which is genius, right? It, it shows you all of your recent photos in reverse uh, chronological order from the top. You know, brilliant. And it, it works wirelessly. If you want to plug in, you can plug in that way too. But it's it's really neat. Um, there's a screen mirroring feature that's available not on all phones, but on many phones. And then this app capability, like I was just talking about, is uh, it's there if you have a Samsung. It will be there for everybody soon. And it's going to get a lot better soon too. So if you haven't looked at it, and, you're, and by the way, you have to have an Android phone, just to be clear, because if you have an iPhone, you know, you get what you pay for. But if you have an Android phone... Uh, the integration on your phone is really incredible. And uh, if if you haven't ever looked at it or it's been a year or two, well, look at it again. I think you'd be I think you'll be impressed by how much it's, it's improved. It's definitely gotten a lot better. It's amazing, in fact, how much better. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. Really useful. Cool. All right. Means it's time for Mary Joe Foley's Enterprise Pick of the Week. Yes, my enterprise pick doesn't have a name, which is makes it a little hard to describe, but um, what it is is a new capability in a specific version of Microsoft 365 that's very much for small, mid-sized business users. So this is a new um, security-related feature. It's for Microsoft 365 Business Premium only. And Business Premium is the version of Microsoft 365 that used to be called Business. It's $20 per user per month. It's kind of like the high end of the, of the SMB versions of the product. And what this does um, is it, it, this feature is going to be turned on through the admin portal. So it's for the IT pro who's in charge of 
all the PCs in their org. And once this feature, the security feature is turned on, it's meant to help IT pros turn on security features for all the tenants that they have in a very easy way. So instead of having to uh, go to each PC and turn different things on, it'll let them automatically turn on things like Windows Defender antivirus, um, a lot of the different Intune capabilities, BitLocker. It'll like just do this all kind of as a group of things that get turned on. It's almost like a baseline security type feature for Windows 10 if you're using Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Um, so that's starting to roll out now to people with Business Premium, and it's supposed to roll out completely over the next few months. I don't know if it's coming to any other versions of Microsoft 365 because that wasn't in Microsoft's blog post about this, but it sounds pretty interesting for for kind of SMB customers who say um, they want to have security applied everywhere, especially when people are working remotely um, because of the pandemic, but they don't want to have to actually go and make sure it's turned on for each individual tenant. It'll do this as kind of a block turn on. Nice. Yeah. Very so it sounds convenient. pretty interesting. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how about uh, a code name? You got one? You are, after all, yes. the code name queen. <laughs> well, this is a code name thanks to Brad Bunny Suit Sams. <laughs> um, the code name Careful, is Poster. If you say his name three times, he appears. You know I know. That, right? He okay. shows up. <laughs> Poster is the code name. And right before his account was banished today, the walking cat asked me on Twitter. Is poster something to do with Surface? And Brad, I asked Brad, and Brad said yes. Uh, poster was the code name for the 55-inch Surface Hub, um, which is the one we were talking about earlier that's getting Windows 10 Pro and Windows 10 Enterprise now. So it's a curious code name, right? It's not a city. It's not a geographic place. It's not a color. Like, poster. <laughs> like, I, I asked Brad, I'm like, Poster, like a poster on the wall, or like is there some other <laughs> meaning of poster here? That's and he said, um, "Yeah, it, he, he said it, there's there's other code names in this family, but he didn't really want to get kind into of a it." A terrible code name. It's a weird code name, yeah, right? Like yeah. poster. Is that the size of it? Like a standard poster? Is it roughly that fifty five oh. inch? I don't know. Oh, that's an interesting maybe, question. Maybe oh, that's mm. a very interesting question. Yeah. Maybe a standard size poster is the size of the screen of the Surface Hub 2S. I don't know, but um, I bet yeah. it more it makes more sense if you know the others in the family. Like, I know it all goes yeah. together somehow. It yeah. does, it does. Yeah. So, but I just thought it was a weird code name, and it also was applicable since we were talking earlier about the Surface Hub. Yep. Yes, I yep. am dying for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a very interesting, I've done a couple of these on Windows Weekly before where a bunch of breweries and brewers get together and they say, we're going to post a recipe, make it open source and have wow. other brewers brew it. Neat. Right? Yeah. So today's uh, example of that is a beer called Black is Beautiful. Uh, the, we the Weathered Souls Brewing Company in um, San Antonio, Texas created the recipe. It's for an imperial stout. Um, that's why it's black. If you've ever seen an Imperial Stout, they're usually very, very dark. Um, and this is a benefit beer. Um, all the proceeds from this beer, when they're being brewed by various other breweries, are going to uh, help people who are um, black and people of color who uh, need legal defense and help with police brutality. It happened. This uh, the idea for this happened right after George Floyd uh, was killed. And so there are many, many breweries making this beer. I, I've seen oh, some no of them kidding. in New York show up. 1140 yeah. in every state. Yeah. Wow. In every oh, state. You have no yeah. excuse for not finding this beer. Wow. I know. So it's available in cans and bottles. Other half in New York City um, has a version of it that I've had a chance to try. Um, and a lot of other brewers are making it everywhere. So if you like Imperial Stouts and you want to get money out for a good cause... Go look for Black is Beautiful in your local area. No kidding. That's amazing. Wow. I'm just checking to see if Lagunitas is on this list. They better be. Oh, yeah. I wonder if they're making <laughs> wow. one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is great. That is really, really cool. 
Yeah, the label yeah. is really cool too. If um, you everybody has the opportunity to use the label that was designed, and it yeah, has a lot beautiful. of different shades of black. Yeah, it's really um, with beautiful. the words "black is beautiful." Yeah, yeah it's pretty I really cool. Like it. Yeah, really pretty. Hmm. Good pick, Mary Jo. Yeah. Timely. Thanks. Gosh. Very timely. Very yes. timely indeed. That's Mary Jo Foley. All about Microsoft.com is her ZDNet blog where she's all about Microsoft. Paul Therott himself, also all about Microsoft at therott.com, T H U R R O T T.com. And then, of course, a little bit about TikTok, but yeah, mostly. Little TikTok, still waiting, <laughs> no word. I think, Mary Jo, you nailed it. It's going to be Friday after. after uh, the market's That closed. will be terrible for us, but let's see. <laughs> we'll talk about it next Wednesday. But so typical. Yeah. 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 I know. I know. Um, you know, if if there if there isn't an exodus <laughs> from TikTok after this, I don't know. That's what. the thing. I, I mean, just between the time of the announcement and the actual machinations of it happening, I they could lose yeah. half their users. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, hey. Um, yeah. Well, we'll keep we'll keep an eye on that story. That's for sure. Uh, Paul's books are also at leanpub.com. That's where you'll find the field guide to Windows 10. An excellent introduction, plus a reference for everything you need to know about Windows 10, up to date to all the way up to 2004. In fact, I bet you there's going to be a footnote about uh, Display Link in there. So uh, <laughs> that's actually on my to-do list um, because I I need to see if I need to change anything because yeah. that is um, optional now. That's but. why you get this book because once you buy it at Lean Pub, you get automatically you get all those updates. So that mm -hmm. I think that's a really cool way to do it. I really do. In fact, a necessity, necessity I think, in this day and age of Windows. Um, we do Windows Weekly every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Add 7, that's 1800 UTC. Live streams, uh, audio and video are available at twit.tv slash live. If you're watching live, chat live with us. The chat room is at irc.twit.tv. Both the live streams and the chat room are open 24-7. So if you're up late or up early, come on by and say hi. On-demand versions of the show at our website, twit.tv slash ww. There's a YouTube channel for Windows Weekly. There's also a main YouTube channel for Twit, and you'll find the links to all the other channels at Twit, or sorry, YouTube.com slash Twit. Uh, best thing to do, though, I think really would be subscribe. That way you'll get it automatically, and I don't care what platform you use. It's an RSS feed, so anything that can read RSS, including Spotify, Shoutcast, Overcast, Pocketcast, uh, Apple's Podcast, Google's Podcast, there's a million ways to get it. But if you subscribe, that way you'll get it the minute it's available every week. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Stay well, and uh, we'll see you next week on Windows Weekly. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, I'm Jason Howell, host of All About Android, where each week I'm joined by my co hosts, Florence Ion and Ron Richards, and we talk about everything that has to do with Android. Is it news? Is it hardware? Is it apps? Well, you name it, we talk about it. We invite guests from the industry on the show. We even sometimes have people from the Android team themselves talking about what makes Android so great. And you can subscribe so you don't miss anything about the world of Android by going to twit.tv slash AAA. We'll see you there.